Hi everyone, it's Lori from Cut and Paste, and today I'm filming the class for the Hawksbill Sea Turtle. That's in our tweens, teens, and adults class series. Uh, if you hop on here and see me, you're not missing the class. This didn't have a specific time. I'm just using Facebook Live to film it, and then we will upload it to YouTube. If you would like to uh, watch this uh, another time on YouTube, um, go to our website, cutandpastecraftstudio.com, click on classes, and you'll see where you can register for this. We'll get you the traced canvases and all the paints. But we're gonna get started in just a minute. Let's see if we can get this up and going, and then we'll be ready. Uh, and I'll show you the brushes we're gonna use and the techniques we're gonna use, and then I'll get started painting. All right, this is the um, canvas design that we're using today. Um, just so it makes it easier for me to see what you're seeing. There we go. All right, guys, this is the uh, design that we're filming today. And um, once you get all ready, you can paint along with me. Uh, we've got three brushes that you can use here. Uh, we're gonna start and do our backgrounds with our nice big wide brush here. See the nice flat edge that's really useful for doing lines. This is our medium sized brush. Also good for doing lines, uh, but getting into smaller spaces. And you have a third brush that has a nice little point to it. It's really good for getting into the little tiny spaces. It's also going to be what we are doing our lines with. All right. So what you have is this right here. Um, it's going to be a little hard for you to see my lines. They're a little lighter than yours are. Uh, but you can, you'll, if you've got your trace canvas in front of you, you'll have a good idea of, of where you need to go. Um, we're going to start with dry brushes. We always start with a dry brush on this. Um, and you can customize your colors any way you want as you go along. I'm just gonna have you um, start with the colors I start with. And if you decide you wanna change it up a little bit, you can. All right, the first color we're gonna go into today, I have mine in a palette. You have yours in little cups and things. Uh, we're gonna be using Coastal which is that light blue color, kind of a turquoise blue, and this little A paint set. So we're going to do uh, top of the ocean. This is the ocean that's up near the light. Sea turtles can dive very, very deeply, but we're going to start um, with pretending he's in the shallower water. And I'm going to get all of this uh, spread out here. You can use a fair amount of paint on your brush. Just make sure you brush it out nice and smooth. And don't go too near to your turtle. All right, you don't want to get too close in there. And then I'm going to stop with this coastal waters about here. This is maybe a brush, brush, eh, brush width above your turtle's head. That's going to be where I stop with just a plain blue. So if I go across, that means right about there is where I'm going to stop. Again, you don't need to get right up close yet. And that is super fast. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube um, and I go too fast, you just pause. Okay? You don't need to um, um, try to keep up with me. You just pause. and uh, you can catch up a little later. All right, now I'm gonna go in with my um, 
the, ed the straight edge of my brush and I always like to brace my wrist on the canvas while I'm doing this. You want to make sure um, that you're not like painting way up in the air. It's very hard to control a brush if you don't have your brush. Um, if you don't have your hand braced somewhere. I'm running out of paint. Now, when I'm doing close up work like this, I only like to have the paint maybe about a quarter of the way up my brush because I don't want to have huge globs of it that I then have to spread out. Like there's a glob right there. So I am, again, using this flat edge of the brush, trying to kind of give myself some good control there. Oh, I'm going a little further down than I intended to, but that's okay. We're going to be blending paint in a little while, and we'll come back up. Now, my rule of painting is you turn your canvas when it gets awkward. And it's getting very awkward for me right now. So I'm going to turn my canvas this way. You turn your canvas the direction you need to when you want to. Then I'm going to keep using this brush and it's a nice flat edge. Now, again, um, if you start feeling uncomfortable using this big brush here, you switch to your smaller brush. I'm just doing it along here to get a lot of these big spaces on the flip again and get right down to this edge. Now you'll see I'm still leaving some spots because there's some places where I'm just going to have to go in with my tiny brush in a minute. If you do the whole painting with tiny brushes, then you get a lot of brush strokes and it takes forever. So here's our canvas. And if I have some spots I think are kind of um, uh, blotchy, or they need a second coat. I'm going to leave that until later. I don't want you to have to sit and watch me um, cover up little details. So that's something you can fix at the very end. I'm now switching to my small brush. You want to keep your small brush with a nice tight point. If it ever gets um, loose, I always say use a dry brush, but in this case, dip it in water and then use your fingers like this to twist it and you'll get a good sharp point. And the key with these is tiny amounts of paint. See that? I'm only a third or a quarter of the way up the brush. So I'm going to use that to get into these tiny little spots here. All right. I think I left a little spot right there too. And maybe right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to flip back up so you can see my turtle right side up. And um, this is where we're going to start uh, mi uh, mixing our paint a little bit. Because if you remember on the original, we kind of uh, have a, a ombre, a gradation, because of course it's darker and darker as you go lower and lower in the ocean. So, um, oh, when you're not using a brush, please keep it in your water bowl. Once it's got paint on it, it needs to be living in the water bowl if you're not actively painting with it. So, um, I'm going to have you mix a couple of colors. I'm using a paint palette, um, but if you don't have one, you can easily use, um, say, the cup that uh, the paint color A came in, you can always use the lid for that. So I'm taking um, color A and color B, and I'm gonna take a big scoop of A and put it into this next little cup. You can put in your little cup. Um, and I'm gonna wash, dry my brush off a little bit so it doesn't have a lot of paint on it. And I'm gonna take just a little bit, see just a little like that, of the darker blue, and I'm gonna mix them together. So um, it's really up to you. You're going to blend this color so you don't have to worry about it being uh, a perfect shade. It doesn't have to look just like mine. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come on with that paint. That's, this is the brush I used to um, blend with. So I just kind of kept going with it. And I'm going to kind of blend it up a little bit into there. And then come on down maybe about halfway down his fin. Oh, 
a little blue there. Don't worry if you get a little too much one color or another, you just keep going back and working it and blending it and blending it. I'm going to use that same bit right over here. Um, it's a little harder to shade, you know, around his little head. Um, so just get a little on there and then just bring it up. And if you've got too much paint on your brush, just uh, dry your brush off and then use it to blend. All right, that one got a little heavy over there. So here again, I'm going to dry my brush off and just blend those colors down. While the paints are still wet, it's a really good time to get them good and blended. And I want to get my blending up about the same height there. So, um, and then I'm going to have to turn my canvas again because I'm getting into these spots that I can't normally reach. And again, I'm still using that color I mixed. And I'm going to bring it down about to the point of his nose there with this particular blend of color. Now you may have, uh, you should have Q-tips in your kit. If you ever go over with your color in a place you don't want to be, um, get your Q-tip wet and you can swipe up the paint. Let's see, this needs to come up to, yeah, that's about right. So that's about the right light for this, about the right height for this color. But I want to get up to my edges here. Again, using that flat edge of the brush. Again, if I get going too fast here, you all just pause me and turn it back on when you get caught up. And if you need to switch to the tinier brush, feel free to do that. All right. Ah, we need to get a little in between his legs here. and a little under his chin. Now, where you take these lines, whoops, I just went over his face a little bit. Uh, where you take these lines is totally up to you. If you would like to get much deeper and darker quicker, you could make it dark, you know, you could uh, finish up with this and move on to darker color even faster. All right, I need to get right up to this where I can see it. There we go. And he's got that little hawk's beak right there. That part of what a hawk's little turtle has is the bill right there is um, that color. Oh, I'm just kind of really uneven here. But that's not a big deal. It's going to get blended in soon anyway. All right. So now um, I've pretty much used up the paint I mixed. Um, but that's okay. You know, you can um, go back and... And we're going to add a little more paint this next time. See, I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. Um, so now I'm going back to my paint again. I'm going to do my scoop of Coastal Waters again. And then this time I'm going to do a bigger scoop of the blue. So instead of just a little scoop, I'm going to use a bigger scoop. And then this is up to you. You look at how dark it got. Maybe compare it to what you've got going on there, and you may say, ooh, I need more. Um, because I did. I had to make mine a little, a little darker, or it's not going to have much difference. So mix it around until you get the color you like. This is not what I'm going for. I'm getting more true blue and less of an aqua blue going on there. Um, and then we just start again. Adding our paint. And then I know I have a little too much paint on this brush right now. So look, I just wipe mine off. And then that's where I can start the blending. You really want a drier brush for that blending part. If you use too wet of a brush, you're going to end up with just the darker color. All right. And I'm going to try to get my details right up to the edge of him. There we go. And then 
time to flip him over. I'm going all the way upside down this time. Get a good bit of that paint on there. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off. Remember, always wipe it off to get your blending going there. Now, I wipe off a little too much. Seems like I needed a little more paint there. All right. Going upside down for me there. Well, I should say sideways. And then I'm going to do this inside area. Come on up there. I'm taking the paint right up to the edge. I'm getting a little fast here. I'm going to try to slow myself down. You paint so many of these. This will be the fourth time I've painted this. And you tend to rush yourself through it. So slow down if you need to. Don't speed through it. And then I'm going to leave this right here because I need to use that tiny brush to get in there. But then, oh, it's getting awkward again. Remember what I said. Anytime it feels awkward to paint, that means you need to turn your canvas so that you can brace your wrist and reach it better. Uh, getting that corner a little crooked there. Now, my blending up here in between his legs, I need to go back and do that a little better. Um, so I got my brush dry. And then smooth that out a little bit. All right. I think we're doing pretty well there. <laughs> you can see my line is not going completely across. Maybe the sun's coming down more on this side. Um, and then this is where um, I'm going to take the color I've already mixed and do a big scoop of this dark blue because I want to get down to my deepest blue color. This is the depths of the ocean. Now, I don't know if you'd actually get this much gradation um, from where a turtle's swimming. Maybe he's... Uh, you know, he's not, this, the, the sunny part and the deep part may not be that close together. But I just really love the colors, so that's what I used. Coastal Waters, this one up here, is the most popular color in the shop. And I must tell you, it is one of my most, um... It's one of my favorite colors to work with. It mixes so beautifully with so many different colors. Um, we do it a lot with um, the melons and shrimps and things like that. But it also looks really good with navy. Um, now, I've had kids in the shop who um, mix it with neon pink, which I don't really care for, but they love it. So um, Now, I have, again, dried this brush off so that I can do my blending there. All right, um, I have some spots. I have got to go back to and get into my nooks and crannies there. I completely mixed it. Let's see if we can. Y'all don't forget to do your nooks and crannies like I did. Then you've got to go back and mix up another little bit of paint. Luckily, I have a little bit left here on the edge. And you can smooth that down. I think this one fin looks like armor, almost. And it probably is. That's probably how he keeps himself safe. Maybe we're going to go back, um, and this is where I 
missed getting in my little details right there. Use the point of that skinny brush to get into there. There you go. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're talking about skinny brushes. It's a good thing you all are very, very patient with me because I just discovered a spot I missed. Did you all miss this? This little bit on this back fin. Fortunately, that's from the original blue color, so I still had plenty of it that was unmixed. All right. What are we thinking? Are we liking this so far? Again, if I have moved too quickly for you, you pause me and you move on and you uh, get your painting done and then come back. Now this time, I went a little lighter with my... Um, uh, with my ocean, you could probably go a little darker if you wanted to. Just pull out that straight, pure blue and, and put on there. Now, this would be a time for you to pause the video and blow dry this. Because the nice thing about blow drying it is, as you're leaning your hand, as you're bracing your hand to do painting, you'll have a dry surface to work with. Plus, you don't have to worry about running into uh, wet paint as you're painting with your new colors. Um, I don't, uh, most of mine is dry up here, and I don't mind getting paint all over the side of my hands. It's usually that way anyway. Um, so, but if this is a good time for you to do it, get your blow dry out, out and dry that up. Or if you need to go take a break for a minute, let it dry. It'll dry quickly. And then um, the next color we're going to paint is um, called Coffee Bean. And um, you've got three. It should be labeled number one in your paints. Um, I've, you, I've got three colors. There's um, a reddish brown and a dark, dark brown. And then this middle, just a good solid brown. That's Coffee Bean. So it'll be labeled number one in your paints. And for coffee bean, let me show you real quickly right here. Um, I'm going to go with my smaller brush. Well, not smaller, my medium brush. Get it in good and clean. And you're going to be painting um, his whole big shell. Now, don't worry about these white lines. When you paint this coffee bean onto the turtle shell, you're still going to be able to see the lines that I traced on here. This brown doesn't cover all that well, which is great because it, it's really good for shading. So you're going to paint the entire shell with the brown and this one big fin. And don't worry about the line not showing again. We're going to repaint those. That's when your, your fine motor skills are going to be challenged. So don't forget his little tail there. Um, but that's what we're going to be painting with number one, coffee bean. See what I mean? You spread this out nice and smooth. Um, the brush strokes really show, but I think it gives a lot of texture. Um, a sea turtle shell is not all one color, and we're, we're going to be adding shading to it later. Um, so it's it's kind of nice that it has this. Sort of texture. Now you can slide the edge of the here to give yourself a sign, or you can do the thing where you place it and pull it up. Just make sure you get it clump like that. Take your time, there's no hurry. You can see that you have a line there, but I'm going to go back over it and smooth it out. Still want to see the lines. Now I need to start getting into tail work, so I'm going to switch the direction of my canvas and start going in like this.
I think that corner is going to need my tiny detail brush, so we'll leave that for now. Again, keep spreading it all out. If you ever get way, way, way too much paint and you just can't get it to spread out, use the tip of your paper towel and just kind of lightly spread it over like that, and that'll help smooth it out. But again, see, I've got some texture going on here, and I like that. I like that he, uh, the sea turtle, I don't know why I keep calling him he, but I like that it um, gives his shell a good bit of texture. And again, I'm not using a whole lot of paint on the brush. I'm maybe going a quarter of the way up. Can you see that? We take this right over here, but we're not doing this back fin here. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. And we are going to paint this tail right here. And it connects up to that right there. All right, I've got a little too much paint on my brush there, so I'm going to smooth this all out. Got a big clump right there. So again, spread it out so you can still see those lines pretty well. All right, switching to my tiny brush. Again, you can switch to your smaller brushes when you need to. Don't feel like you have to wait until I do it. And that got me into my edge there. All right, here's my upside down turtle. Now flip it back over, and we're going to go in um, and paint the big fin. This is the forward fin, and you're seeing the top of it, which does kind of have these sort of armored plates on it. Now, yeah, when you put the brown on, you may start finding it a little hard to see all those lines. But you know what? These lines are very, uh, they're different on every sea turtle. And that's one of the ways scientists are able to track uh, sea turtles. You know, these turtles live for hundreds of years, and they can um, kind of follow them along um, when they see them. They have certain territories they hang out in, and they can recognize them by the patterns on both their shells and on their fins. Some of them, you know, they've been around so long they start having scars and marks and things on on their shelves. All right, I'm going to turn again because I need to start working on this line right here. And again, bracing my wrist and going right up to the edge and pulling away so I can get into that line. And then every so often smooth it out because you will get clumps. Or light patches. All right, that's good there. I'm going to leave those little spots for my tiny brush. Um, go back in here. Find straight line to go up against. And we will be outlining all of this with other paint colors later. So you don't have to worry too much about, oh, is my line perfect or not? All right. And I think I've got a little too much on my brush. So I'm going to dry it off and then spread it out. Now you will not be able to see my paint lines, but I'm pretty sure you can see your own. So get that really well spread out there. All right, keeping my brushes in the water all the time. And now I'm switching to my tiny brush. And getting into those details. And 
and this little funny finger. And this little finger up here. All right, now I'm going to go up to the blue right there and kind of fill that in. Okay, I think we're pretty good. And that is the end of coffee bean for right now. Actually, we will come back for one little tiny other dot later for our coffee bean. Um, let's see, our next color, let me check real quick here. All right, our next color is Daisy Cream. It's the lightest color you've got. Looks kind of like white, but it's a cream color. And again, if you want to stop it now and um, blow dry your canvas, you are welcome to do that. Just pause me. Make sure your brush gets really well cleaned out. And then dry it off super well on your paper towel. We are going to do daisy cream with everything else. So all the rest of that turtle is going to get daisy cream. And again, you switch to um, a smaller brush when you feel the need. Like I know I'm going to need the smaller brush for those uh, little bits that come out of his, um, his fin there. And that little, oh, I don't know, is that his thumb maybe? <laughs> Now you probably can barely see this daisy cream on there. It's not very different from the white. Oh, I'm getting a little crazy here. I'm going to try to slow down and use my smaller brush to get in those details later. And you can just paint over the whole bit. I'm, I did not get into his beak all the way with this big brush, so I'm going to wait and use my smaller detail brush to get into his beak. Uh-oh. Yep, be careful. Don't set your hand on white, on wet paint. Or you might smear it into the other white paint, wet paint. All right, and see if I can still see those lines underneath it. Um, we'll be using those lines. We'll be covering them up um, with other colors of paint, so you don't have to worry about um, getting those covered. With You won't need a second coat or anything to cover up that paint. All right, did you see what I did there? I just went over the edge a little bit. If you've got a Q-tip, this is a great time. Get your Q-tip wet. I got a little... Um, bit of paper towel I'm going to get wet and then you can just use that q-tip to swipe where you got that paint and see it comes right off and you know it, it um, if it uh, lightens the color beneath that that's okay you can always go back and touch it up all right I'm going to do that thing where I touch the edge and pull away just to get my nice straight line there. All right, now I'm getting a little too low. I'm going to need to go into that with my, uh, in this point, I feel like I'm going to need to use my pointy brush to get there. So go back to the heavier parts. And again, this is kind of subtle. Um, but the sea turtle would not have pure white on him, so we tried to match the colors up with a real hawksbill sea turtle. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I have to give credit here, um, we have an um, artist who works for us, um, Henry Dennison, uh, local, he's um, a Dunbar graduate. And he has done quite a few of our designs. He did uh, the sea turtle that we did with the younger kids. He did um, 
the um, the puppy dog, and he did the panda that we're going to do next Thursday. All right, trying to move on to this little foot, so I'm going to move it down here where I can reach it easily. Make sure I'm still lined up here. Um, and um, Henry also designed the alpaca that I'm going to be filming later. Um, ooh, there I went again, going over the edge. Um, this video will go up on YouTube, and then when I film um, the alpaca, we'll get him up on that one up on YouTube as well. And cover up that back into that. Definitely show to my smaller brush and get into those again. Don't use too much paint, just you may have to reload frequently, but that's okay. Thoughts. Oh, yeah, don't forget him right there. And right there, I could see a spot where I got a little crazy and went over the blue. Um, I always tell people in the shop, it is much easier to remove paint than to cover it up. So if you've got a Q-tip and you can go after that, I may need to touch that up with blue later. Um, but if I get most of that blue off, I think it helps. There we go. And where else do I need to touch up? Oh, I think I needed to get right up into this tip. All right. I think we are doing well here. Okay. Um, this is the point where we're going to start using this very fine brush and we're going to um, paint some very, very, very tiny lines. Um, so what I need you to do, again, get your brush wet, twist it in your fingers, and then you got it, this, let me line it up so you can see it, you've got this very sharp point and you only want this tiny amount of paint on it. All right. And this is where we're going to start following the lines on the shell of our sea turtle. And remember, when you're doing this, make sure you've braced your hand. Now, your canvas will be lying down flat. It's a whole lot easier to paint these while you're lying down flat because you can brace your hand. And probably by now, your brown is dry, your blue is dry, so you won't have any problem with that. So the first line I'm going to trace is this one, this small, this border right along here. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. It's best if you, you know, touch the tip and kind of pull it towards you. And if it gets a little blotchy, just go back and smooth it out a little bit. But keep small amounts of paint. You don't want heavy amounts. And then I'm going to outline as it comes up to the edge of that uh, uh, water. All right, so I can see a few spots where I got a little lighter. I can always go back and touch it up. Your lines can be thicker than mine. They may be thicker in some places than others. That's okay. Then you're going to see that there are some lines um, connecting these two. Let me see if I can start at the very beginning. And that'll kind of give you an idea of where to... Um, I'm also going to lie along the bottom here. All right, see, there's one right there. 
And there's one right there. You may have to look hard for them, but they're there. You can see them through the brown. Or you can just make up your own set of lines if you want to have it somewhere different. And it gets smaller and smaller. And I think that's my last one. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here along the bottom. That just kind of smooths out my connection between where the brown stopped and the white started. There we go. All right. Um, then you've got the bigger lines um, on the back of the sea turtle, and I'm going to turn my canvas, I think, uh, to be able to get those. Anytime that you need to stop and go blow dry, do that, um, you know, so you don't end up with a handful of paint. Um, but also so that you don't smear things. Um, so I'm going to start with this little line here. And he goes up there. Oh, I got a little thick. Um, try not to press down too hard. If you hold your brush straight up and down more, you'll get a thinner line. If you, you know, flat down like that, you're going to get a thicker line. And don't be too hard on yourself. This is tough. You're painting tiny little lines. If you hate one of your lines, get a wet Q-tip and wipe him up. If that messes with your brown paint, go over your brown paint. We have lots of ways to fix things. And then this line continues on to here. And that one continues down like that. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Don't think I am. All right. Once you have done that, <laughs> you get to tackle the tough part, which is um, this uh, um, the sort of armor plating on his on his fin here. Now I did not outline the fin. I'm trying to make sure I'm not blocking your light here. I kind of like to do like a whole bunch of the straight up and down lines at once. So I'm going all in the same direction at one time. And then I can go back and do the cross lines like that. This one goes down here. Oh, no, I'm not planning to outline that. Sorry about that. Yeah, I know I've done this four times, but I still forget little details. So I'm going to take off that line there because I did not mean to outline um, the edge there. Now you can, if you'd like to have the edge of your sea turtle um, outlined in the white, that is okay. And then these are little sort of C shapes here. And that one goes up there. You know you're getting older when you have to look over the rim of your glasses to see all the details. <laughs> Now, if your lines don't look exactly like mine, that's okay. These turtles are all going to be different. Remember, the key is tiny amounts of paint. Yes, you have to reload often, but that's okay. And see, he doesn't have to be perfect because... Like I said, all of these creatures have different bits of armor plating in different ways. Can we see that? Ah, I have to go up here and kind of connect it to the white there. And then this part connects to the white right there too. There we go. Let me connect that a little there. Now, if you would like um, the cream color to be darker, 
um, you can go back and put a second coat of this white on there. Just pause us and uh, go on back and do a little bit um, of the of the cream color lines a little bit heavier. You want it to stand out more. All right, and then let's see our next color. That's Daisy Cream. We're now going to go to number three, which is Pine Cone Brown. Pine Cone is this reddish brown. It should be labeled number three on yours. All right, and again, we're going to be using um, the tiny brush for our pine cone. And we're going to dip again just a little bit. And this is where we're going to do some um, shading on this guy. Um, he's got some little lines like right about here. And you can see these lines that kind of run through his neck. Kind of defining those wrinkles that all those turtles have. And where else do I have an Oh, I've got one right here. And then right here. I don't know about you, but I'm seeing the spots where I missed um, <laughs> painting the cream. All right. And then we're going to go right along here. And right along his Now, um, uh, with this color, I also um, outlined the outside. It's not a huge contrast, but it's just a little bit different. Using the pine cone to kind of outline the edge of his shell. Again, small amounts of paint. And I also outlined his belly. Oh, a little too much paint there. Just a little blobby there, but that's okay. We're going to be coming back with even more shading color, so that's all right. Um, and also, and, um, on the fins, I used just I, I brushed off some of my paint. I just wanted a little bit of sort of shading along the fins. I didn't want see how that's much lighter than this up here. So I dipped it in paint and then I just kind of whoosh, whoosh, wiped it off on my paper towel so that um, I'm really just shading the edges there instead of super dark. All right, kind of shaded that fin. Um, I'm going to switch over here so I can reach it better. Um, in fact, I may go all the way upside down. And again, I'm outlining both the other fins, paint on my brush, and then wipe it off. Well, I wiped off a little too much. <laughs> you just, you know, adjust it. If you realize, oh, I don't have quite enough, just add a little bit on there. If you have too much, take it off. The nice thing is, if you get a big glob there, you can wipe your brush off and just smooth that glob out, you know, spread it out a little bit. And every time you reload, I keep drying off too much. Every time you reload, dry off your brush so you don't have too much. All right, see that's giving just a little definition there um, to our other fins. I'll put him back. Oh, you know what? We need a little definition right here, don't we? All right. Ah, one more place I missed. Let's get a little, oh, my brush got away from me. Let's get a little shading on the top of his head here. And under his chin. There we go. All right.
Then we are moving on to, that was pine cone brown. Now we're going to use banana cream. That's the one only yellow you've got. You won't, you won't miss that. Um, I'm going to use my um, pointy small brush again because the spaces we're getting into are pretty small. Um, and again, I don't want a lot of this. I'm going to load my brush up, but then I'm going to brush a lot of it off. And I'm just going to shade starting down near the belly. I'll put the most amount of color down near the belly. And then as my brush dries and runs out of paint, I'll work it up. Can you tell that it's a little darker near the belly than the top? So again, load up your brush down here. And then as your brush dries, kind of work it up a little bit. There we go. And then I did just a touch of the yellow along this edge of this fin, just like that. And which side did I do the other two? Oops, the top. Okay. Just a little shading of yellow right here, and a little shading of yellow right there. And again, you're using a brush that you wipe most of the color off of, and you can kind of spread it out. So there we have some of our um, yellow shading. Um, now, a lot of what's on the turtle that makes a turtle distinctive are these darkest spots down here, but that will be the last thing that we do. Um, it's listed as color number five, but I'm going to skip ahead to um, some of the shading on here. The re reason is when you make these sort of dots, they take forever to dry. So I will skip ahead to a couple of different colors, and then we'll work our way back. I'll take a sip here. All right. Um, we're going to go back to Daisy Cream now. And we're going to use um, our tiny brush again, and we're going to be doing that sort of dry brush thing again. My uh, paper towel is getting really <laughs> covered up with paint. You all need to grab another one. So we're going to add just a little bit of paint onto our brush, and then we're going to swish, swish, take, take it off. And then we're going to kind of make sort of a C shape. I mean, it's a little too much paint. I want a very soft amount of paint. And you're going to make a C shape that kind of has two little eyes like that. I'm doing it a little darker than I normally would so that you can see it. Now, you may not be able, you know, on these big ones, you can get this C shape. And two little, you want them all to come to a point. This one's getting a little carried away on me. Just like that. And then sort of two little points. Almost, I don't know, like the tentacles on a jellyfish. And then this, oh, and one more here. Maybe one there. And then this one. He will come this way. He'll kind of go sideways. Reload, take it off, and then this one will also go sideways. Just get a little bit of paint, just a little of um, the texture for it. Don't worry if it looks too wild right now. Don't. We're going back with another color. We're going to see how many colors we can get on each little of the, of the turtle. All right, reload up a tiny amount, and um, you're going to do the same sort of shape, you know, like this, kind of a C shape and a C shape. All right, and that's that for right there. Now we're going to switch to Canyon Orange. That's your, your nice bright orange color there. And again, this is shading. So again, you're dipping just a little bit of paint on that brush, and then you're taking most of it off. 
and then just touch it on there and see, you know, how's that looking? Oh, that's looking pretty good. Um, you are not going to be able to see my paint very well because you're doing it very subtly. And again, um, get as much paint in there as you want. Um, so Hawksbills have a fair amount of orange in their shells. So um, you can get a little wilder with the color if you want. You can go a little, little softer. I like to kind of go right on top of that white or you know, just barely next to it um, because it softens up that and, and just makes it not so starkly white colored. Hawksbill turtle shells are just amazing, which is probably why they're endangered. Oh, now I got a little too much. See that? I don't know if you can see that blob of orange there. I got a little too much, so I wiped off my brush. Guys, it's always important to turn your brush handles away from your elbows so that while you're teaching a class, you're not whapping around. So then let's get over these two. And I was talking about how beautiful their shelves are. They actually have super, some super bright colors. There's a lot of bright, bright yellow and orange. And to me, they just defied copying. I am not uh, <laughs> able to do it quite as well as they were. All right, we are getting to the point. Oh, um, let's, I left out a little spot. Um, Go back to your coffee bean and draw his little his I'm not sure it's his lip but it's part of his beak there and then the center part of the eye is also coffee bean all right you know if I film this over and over and over again I would get these right every time, but um, I think you guys are patient with me, so we'll just leave it at that. Now, if you want to stop and blow dry at this point, that's a good time, too. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some white paint here. If you have white paint from your other sets, or if I include it in this set, um, you can use the white paint if you need to. You could use the cream paint. Um, and this is where your straw comes in. Um, turtles are air breathers. They do. They take a big deep breath. And they go way, 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 way down deep. And they're able to hold their breath for an amazing amount of time. I don't think I can quote you the amount of time they do. Um, but it's it's a long time. But they do, of course, eventually have to blow bubbles. So um, I'm uh, dipping the paint in the lid of my little cup. Or you can just touch it into the um, um, cup. And you could try it out, say, on your, paper, your table covering and see if you get enough of a ring. And you don't want... A super heavy ring. You want it to be kind of maybe not perfect, but you may have to reload. Make sure you press it. In fact, what you may want to do is put it down and without moving, just roll it a little bit, and that'll give you a. Mine are getting a little too even here. I think I need to get a little more random. Now, if you've ever seen bubbles coming up from the water, they are more, they're actually smaller. I only have one size of straw. They're, um, they're more compact at the bottom, and then they spread out as they expand. So I'm going to put just a few more down here at the bottom. And there are the bubbles my sea turtle is going. Now, we are getting amazingly close to the end here. Um, there are some details that you can always add. Like, I think I'm going to go back with a little bit of brown paint. Uh, maybe that um, number three um, paint that we used to outline some things there. I think I'm going to go back over here and give him a little more definition along that shell. But this is the point at which we start adding the, the polka dots. And the polka dots are not marked on your sea turtle. All right. Uh, but they are clustered in several different areas. Um, both of his back fins are very heavily freckled. Let's call them freckles. And if you look closely at mine, can you see they're all different sizes? 
and um, they, you know, there are big ones and some of them are oval and some of them are long and some of them are tiny in between. Um, but they're, they cover both of those. There's a little clump of them. What is that? Is that his shoulder maybe? Yeah, right above that big fin. Um, his other big fin has a cluster that goes down here and up this inside and then some right here. And then he's got a cluster of some fairly big ones around his eye. And then they peter out to some little tiny ones over here. But I'm going to show you um, polka dotting techniques. Some of you, if you've ever been in my shop or in my classes or in my camps or <laughs> anything like that, you know we've shown you polka dots over and over and over again. Um, you can use um, any of the wrong ends of your brushes to do polka dot with. Okay? And you'll note your skinny brush has the smallest your medium sized brush is a little bit bigger and your biggest brush is um, right there. Now I don't prefer to use this biggest brush. I think it gets a little too big, um, but I am gonna start with this medium sized brush for the tip. And what we're gonna use now is color number five, which is woodland brown. That is your super duper dark brown, okay? Woodland brown. And I'm just gonna dip my paintbrush in it like that. I got a glob and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make a dot and it makes a pretty good round dot like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do this just to demonstrate how it works. If I don't reload and I keep dotting like this, my dots will get smaller and smaller as I go up. If I reload each time, they'll all be the same way, but I want mine to be a little more random than that. So and, uh, another way, because you don't want all of them to be round. So right about here, I'm going to make an, a sort of uh, oval one where I dot down and I drag about like that. Um, this is also a really good way to make carrots for um, the noses of your um, uh, snowman. If you're ever painting a snowman, you just dip it in your orange paint, set it down and drag and you get a perfect carrot for your snowman nose. So just keep um, adding some dots and the dots are going to kind of go up along this roughly edge and then they're going to kind of stop and I'm going to switch over to my small brush and we're going to add just some more of these little tiny ones. Um, they will get of course smaller as you go along so you may want to mix up where they go so you don't just get a straight line of small ones. Um, and then there's another cluster. Um, and I'm going to make this one curve like, like that. Um, and then there's one, you know, do some like right there. And again, very random around here. And you can switch around, go back and forth between your big brush and your small brush. And that's about where I think they are on that one. Um, then we're going to go up here and we're going to add some in this armpit area. I think that one's too oval. I'm going to make him a bigger dot like that. There we go. And again, these are, these are your dots. You do them however you want. Get some creative little shapes. Now, um, these two back fins are going to be completely covered in all different kinds of dots. So um, I would start by doing a bunch of the bigger dots because there are a bunch of bigger ones here. I'm going to do one right there, maybe one right there. And just, you know, they are random. They are in different sizes. Some of them might go right up to the edge. Some of them might be out here in the middle. And they go at different angles. So that's my collection of bigger ones. And you see what I mean about how thick this paint is? That's going to take a long time to dry, so you're not going to want to mess with it. Um, but this, I'm now going to switch to my tiny brush and start filling in 
lots and lots and lots of smaller dots. And remember, you can just kind of move around and it'll get tinier and tinier and tinier. And you want it really filled up. He's a very, very covered up uh, fin there. And then same thing over here. Start with some bigger ones. Creative. All right. Now I'm going to switch to the other end of my skinny paintbrush and go back to um, my skinny little point. All right. Tiny, tiny dot. Again, we're still on woodland brown. Tiny little dot, and you're going to do two sets of lines here. There's one that loops over the eye, and there's another one that loops over the eye like that. And then I think. And there's my eyeball. And then in my painting, um, this little mountain kind of dark. There we go. So that's where it's mountain. Now I'm going to um, do a lot. Um, so I'm using my small brush, but doing some bigger dots, and then um, just uh, where it gets smaller as you go. So I'm going to do I'm going to do a dot here, and then I'm going to ring it around the eye and see how it's getting tinier and tinier there. And I'm going to do the same thing out this way because I want my dots getting smaller as they go toward the neck. And I'll do that one. Like that. All right. I feel like I need a little bit more there. And I need another one right there. All right. We are done. Can you please? <laughs> They are slightly different. Now, you go back and do any more shading you like, add any more um, amount of paint you'd like. I think I'm going to go back once my dots are dry because I don't want to smear them. I think I'm going to add an extra line here across the top uh, with that punk cone brown, that sort of reddish brown that was in the middle there. Um, and then, you know, any other places like, oh, I'm seeing a little bit of white there. I might want to touch up. I might want to touch up a little bit of my ocean. Um, but other than that, you are all done. I hope you had a wonderful time. We're going to upload this. It will be ready on YouTube. Um, very soon and then um, by Tuesday I will have the alpaca painted and up on the YouTube channel also that's the cut and paste craft studio you